Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you how I like to use and think about Citadel contrast paints from Games Workshop, which are a fantastically useful tool for your painting, especially when you use them amongst other various kinds of paints that are out there. Now there are a couple of key things that you need to understand about these paints to get the best out of them, and we're going to be going through that in this video. So we really hope you enjoy it, we'll see you at the desk. So the first thing to ask is what exactly is a contrast paint? And at first glance it'll look a lot like a shade paint or a wash, but actually it's different and it's important to understand the difference. The idea of them is that they combine both the base coating stage of painting a miniature and then the washing stage of that colour into one step. And the main advantage of this of course is that it makes things much much quicker. It also means you can get some really nice bright vibrant colours too. But there are some drawbacks to it that you need to be aware of, and the first is that they're transparent. So the colour you put down before the contrast paint is really important, and you can get all sorts of different effects by changing this. The second thing is that they are a little bit runny and can be quite free flowing so if you're not careful they can run out of control so you do need to apply them neatly and evenly as well. Now we're going to illustrate this by painting the power arm of a space marine first of all and we're going to paint it like an ultramarine so we're going for blue. The colour of course I need is ultramarine's blue and well we're going to talk a little bit about this a bit more in depth later but there's actually different sorts of contrast paints and you'll find over time they behave slightly differently. Now the kind I'm using here is a slightly chalky one really and you can really see it standing out with that sort of whiteness that you get on the bottom of the paint pot and that is the pigment collecting at the bottom there. This isn't a problem, if you shake it enough that will go away, but you can easily help rectify that by getting hold of a ball bearing which is what I've got just here, and all you do is drop it into the paint pot which just helps stir things up a little bit more. There we go, you can hear it now. That will help get rid of that, and again you just keep on mixing it and eventually that white will go away. But to be honest with you it's not really a big problem, you don't need to worry about it if it looks like this. Um, I think we're ready to go for this straight away as it is. So. What I'm going to be doing is starting to apply this to the power armour. Now a really important thing to think about is that when you put this on, slapping it on in loads is not a good idea because it tends to run and collect towards the bottom of the model. So instead what you should do is apply it thinly and evenly and think of it almost like felt tip pens. Okay? So I'm going for a paint brush that's not too big for this. If you're doing a larger model you want to have a larger brush, but this one is a regiment brush from the Army Painter, a really good size for the kind of area that we're covering here. And it's a good idea to get some onto the palette to sort of see how it behaves as well. You can water this paint down with water if you want to. If you go for a certain amount though, if you're really doing it a lot, you'll want to use some of the contrast medium instead, because um, after a while it will start to break down the formula of the paint. But a little bit of water is fine. However, straight out of the pot is just fine. That's what I'm going for here, and I'm just using the palette to make sure that my brush isn't overloaded with paint but there is some on there and with that done we can now start applying it to the model. So pick a good starting point and what you want to do is go for one end of the model. I usually find a foot is a good starting point here so I'm going to start down here. What you do is pick that single panel and just start colouring it in like this, working your way round all the way to the back there like that and notice that once I've put some onto an area I'm not going back to it, I'm just carrying on until I've completed that whole segment. And Once we've done so we'll just see how it's settling. So remember I said it was different from shade paints, well you can really see the difference here because around the front of this foot, if I just get the side right there, you can see how it's settled down and gone evenly across the whole area like that. Now if I was using washers or shades what would happen is it would leave a lot more white showing through there and it would really run into the corners a lot more, but this way it's just stained the whole surface giving me a really nice smooth finish to it. So what you can then do is carry on doing this on the larger surfaces too, for example this one here, I can just start applying it all the way across here. Now it is important that once you start applying it that you don't come back to it because what happens is, on that foot for example, the paint now drying is settling like that and if I start moving it it effectively tears the surface and it will give a really uneven finish to things. But instead you see if I'm just carrying on moving away from it I get a much nicer more even finish to it. So okay, carry on like this, picking one panel out at a time and this way you'll get a nice smooth finish to the paint. The Ultramarine's blue is now completely dry and you can see in the textured areas it gives nice definition but on the larger flatter panels it does go a little bit patchy just because of how bright that undercoat of grey here is compared to the blue that we're using now. Now this isn't a problem because what you can do with contrast paints is apply two thin coats of it and applying a second coat just helps even the colour out a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to do now, still using the same brush, so this is still my regiment brush from the Army Painter and I'm going to be applying the Ultramarine's blue once again in the same method. Now as before if you want to dilute it with a little bit of water you can do so it's not quite so strong, it really depends on the colour that you're using, but all you do is follow the same method to apply it once more and you'll see whilst the colour becomes a little bit stronger it does become much more even. Now 
With that second coat applied, you can see the colors darker, but it is much more even, especially on those smooth areas like that shoulder plate just there. And with that done, you could then move on to highlighting if you wanted to. However, with these guys, because McCrag Blue is such a signature color of the Ultramarines, what I want to do is very quickly apply a glaze of that onto the armor just to even it out and to bring it to that color. And then I'm gonna highlight it using Calgar Blue. But first of all, with McCrag Blue, what I'm gonna do is go for my medium layer brush for this and to glaze on this kind of thing, it should be a very quick stage, very easy to do. What you do is just get a little bit of this paint and then dilute it with a bit more water than you normally would use. So it's quite thin, so a bit more. There we go, so it's quite thin, quite runny like that. And then just get rid of the excess off some, on some tissue. Read it out at the brush so it's not much on there. And then what you do on the flat panels, just apply a, a single even coat of this all across the flat area like this, just to give that nice smooth finish to it and to bring it to that McCrag blue mid-tone. And there we are, you see that glaze nicely establishes that mid-tone for the armor and then we're ready to highlight it. You could of course dry brush it. I'm gonna go for an edge highlight of Calgar blue though, following along all the sharper edges just to pick them out and help them stand out. And with that, the blue of this power armor is complete. And you can see what a lovely smooth finish it's given to the armor. And also you can see that basically what the contrast paint has done has taken the first two stages and put them together. So the base coat and the shading, and then we just laid and highlighted as normal. And this way we've got a smooth finish with no brush marks on it. And it's been much quicker too, especially being able to avoid that recess shading stage on the power armor. But the next thing I'm gonna do is show you another technique with this paint and that you can actually use it as a shading paint or a wash. And it gives a nice smooth finish to it and works particularly well in areas with lots of texture and especially on metallic details as well. That's where I really like to use this for it. Now what we're going to do is start painting in some gold detail on this space ring here to show you what we mean for it and I'm going to be using the medium layer brush from Sitlar for this. I'm using Retributorama to base coat like this and what we want to do to begin with is just literally block in all the details that we want to be gold. So for this model I'm going to be looking at the shoulder pad trim and also this little detail that we've got in the center of the chest just here as well and you could do the exact same thing using silver if you want to but for this example I'm just going to stick with the gold details. I finished blocking in the gold and now I can move on to using the contrast paint to provide that definition and shading for it. And remember earlier on when we were using the Ultramarines Blue House, it was a particular kind of contrast paint. Well, actually there's stronger ones and there's weaker ones. The Ultramarines Blue is a sort of a medium strength one. And for this, what we want to do is use the weaker one so it doesn't dominate the color that we're painting it over too much, especially with these metallics. So there's two that are really good for this kind of thing. First of all, Gulliman Flesh is fantastic for gold details and then Basilicon Gray is fantastic for silver details. We of course are gonna be using Gulliman Flesh here once we painted it on, we'll then do an edge highlight on the gold. For this, I'm going to use Liberator Gold. But with a Goodman Flesh, all you've got to do is paint over the details that we've now prepared, taking advantage of the fact that the contrast paint is see-through. And this works particularly well in areas with lots of texture, so this paint's got lots of areas to really stick to. Remember, the contrast paints, rather than running all over the place into recesses and mostly off the tops of areas of detail, it'll tend to stick over the entire thing and taint the whole thing with colour. So for areas with texture like this, like these rivets, it's absolutely perfect. And all you do is just paint it straight over like this. Remember, like with the blue, start painting on an area and then carry on from there. Don't go back to it once you first painted it on. You see it's settling really nicely already and giving a lovely bit of texture to that gold. That contrast paint is now completely dry and you can see it just really shades it really, really nicely. And all we need to do now is apply a highlight. So I'm using Liberator Gold now just as a quick edge highlight and all the sharpest areas on the gold. And there we are, you can see the finished result in the gold. The contrast paint just gives a really lovely, smooth sense of shading on there. It's really, really nice. So a great little technique to know. Now the next one I'm gonna look at is the really strong contrast paints because these are incredibly useful. And in fact, some of them I consider to be almost toolbox colors that I always have around just because they're so helpful. First of all, I like to use Wildwood for this, which is a really dark brown, and also Black Templar, which is of course black. And these colors are useful because they're so strong. Essentially, whatever you paint them over, they'll dominate it and turn it into that relevant color. So for example, if you just quickly wanted to paint the bulk on the Space Marine Black, 
black. Black Templars are a great way of doing it really quickly and really easily. Now there's a great little technique in using these paints called fine lining, which they're particularly good at. And fine lining is essentially painting dark colours into the recessed details in the miniature to help separate all the colours and make them pop more. And in fact, if you look at some older miniatures, these have often had this technique done on them, which is why they pop out so much. Now to do it, it's, well, it's dead simple. What you need to do is get hold of a finer brush. I'm going to do this with Black Templar for this, using a detail brush on the Army Painter. It's really important that you get one with a fine tip for this. And what you need to do is just get some of your chosen colour. It's a good idea to dilute this with a little bit of water so it's not too strong straight out of the pot. You can see just how strong that colour is. It's such a strong inky black paint there. And then what we need to do is just get a, just a small amount of this loaded up, fine tip on the brush, and what we want to do is take advantage of the property of the paint to allow it to run into recessed details where you want to separate them. So for example, the gold and the blue, if I wanted to separate those a little bit more and make them stand out, all I do is just let the brush just run into the recesses between the two like that and just gently run all the way down. And there we go, we get a strong black line separating them. So it's kind of like inking in a comic book in a way. Now also it allows you to look for any little mistakes, for example, where some of that gold's lipped over into that recess and by just painting this black over the top, you just completely take that away and neaten it up. Also, you can use this to separate panels out of the same colour and make them stand out from each other a little bit more, such as the knee plate just here. It's very easy to run this black into that recess there like that. So this is like an optional extra stage when you're doing details such as power armour, but you can see the difference it makes is really nice, just helping those colours stand out a little bit more. And there we are with that fine lining applied, you can see it just helps separate all those colours. And in fact, by following those techniques, it's possible to get a really nice painted space marine by just doing it just like that. But of course, that's not the limits as to what contrast paint can do, because now what we're going to do is look at how you can use the free flow nature of it to get some really cool blended effects on things by actually mixing the paint on the miniature itself. To do this, what I've got is a plague marine, which I've undercoated using the Wraithbone spray colour. And here he is. What we're going to do is do some cool effects on the skin that we've got just down here. And to do this, I'm going to be using a few different paints. First of all, I've got some Gullum and Flesh, and also some Volupus Pink, and you can introduce as many other colours to this as you like. But what you do is start out with a medium layer brush is a good size for this sort of thing. And what we're going to do is start out by painting in an area just like we were doing with the blue earlier on, picking a section and starting to fill it in. So I'm going to do that at the top of this kind of like tentacle we've got just here, and I'm just going to start around about there, letting the paint flow into all that detail and to give that definition and colour, including this little tentacle that we've got just up here. And the idea here is that we just want to get some on, and whilst it's still wet we're going to introduce another colour to it, and allow the two colours to mix across the middle. So I want to bring it down to around about there. There we go. And now it's time to wash the brush and to get a little bit of Volupus Pink. And I just want a small amount of this, which I'm going to dilute with a bit of water because this is one of the stronger ones. There we go. And then I can start introducing this towards the bottom like this. And because that paint up there is still wet, if I go back and forth across the middle, it starts to mix the two, which helps one fade into the other there like that, you see. So by doing this it's possible to get some really creepy, horrible effects that works particularly well for the Nurgle things. If you find the colours a little bit too strong, it's possible to just quickly jump back to the other one and to apply some of that above it like that to tone it down. And you can see you can go back and forth like this as so long as the paint's still kept wet, and that way you can get some great results. The contrast paint is dry, and here you can see the completed effect. And to really finish it off, what I'm going to do is highlight all this with Kislev Flesh over both colours at the same time, just to help really tie those colours together. Now at the same time, I'm going to be base coating this pipe that we've got just here, because next we're going to show you another effect. But to do so, we need to make sure the area is base coated with a colour first of all. And we'll do it on this pipe, so I'm just going to make sure all this is blocked in ready for that. And there we are, the highlight's been applied, and you can see the completed effect on that horrible creepy claw. It's really simple to do, but it looks great. And also we can now move on to that pipe, because sometimes you're going to want to do this blending effect, but not from one colour to the other using two contrast paints. Instead, something where you're actually blending the colour into the one that's actually beneath it. So in this case, what you can use is contrast medium instead, which is the same as a regular contrast paint, except it's got no actual colour in it, which means you can use it in the same manner. So we're going to do that now using Magos Purple on the uh, tentacle thing that we've got on, well, that pipe on the face. And for this, I'm using a medium layer brush. What we're going to do is apply this just as we did before, starting out with some of the Magos Purple, and I'm just going to pick one side to apply this on. I'm going to start up here towards the top of the pipe and just apply this over some of it there like that. And then whilst it's still wet, I'm going to quickly wash my brush off, and then get some Contrast Medium, 
there we go, and then to start applying this on the other side, allowing the two colours to mix in the middle. And you can see what happens is I get a very, very diluted version further down the pipe, and it gets much stronger towards the top, giving a lovely blended effect going from one colour to the other. Now this of course is a very simplistic um, example of showing how this can be done, but you can do it on lots and lots of models in much more complex ways. For example on claws on miniatures, you can have the colour getting stronger towards the end of the claws and then lighter towards the centre of the body. And with the paint dry, here you can see the completed blended effect. Super easy to do and it looks great as well. And should you want the colour to be a little bit stronger, you can always apply a second coat and then put it on in the same way. And there we are. You can see that contrast paints are a fantastically useful tool and something worthy of having in your collection. Really hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you again very soon.